Hello everyone and welcome to QuickMed where medicine is explained quickly and easily. In this video, we will be discussing ear infections, particularly otitis media and otitis externa, so let's get to it. If you haven't already, we recommend watching our previous video on ear anatomy because the information presented there will be highly applicable to this video and will help you understand the material just a little bit better. Let's start with otitis media, which is an infection of the middle ear. It's also known as separative otitis media, so just make sure you're aware of that terminology in case those two terms or phrases are used interchangeably. So when should we consider otitis media? Patients can present with a wide variety of symptoms, and it also depends on their age. Fever can be possible, as well as ear pain, which is the most common complaint. In pediatric patients, look out for other symptoms like ear tugging or rubbing as well as nonspecific symptoms like irritability or fussiness or changes in feeding. Now aside from symptoms, what do we see when we use the otoscope? In this photo here, we're actually looking at the eardrum of a patient with acute otitis media. So one of the findings here is erythema, which you can see in the photo, but just keep in mind that erythema is not diagnostic of acute otitis media. And you might wonder, why is that? This is because erythema is a very nonspecific finding. It can be present in patients that have a cough or even a fever, and so it's not by itself diagnostic of an ear infection. Another finding that we see here is a bulging tympanic membrane, and this is actually a hallmark finding in acute otitis media. It is much more specific than erythema. This is because a bulging tympanic membrane indicates both acute inflammation and a middle ear effusion. And in this photo here, we actually do see some whitish to yellowish exudate that is lying behind the tympanic membrane. So let's say that you've diagnosed your patient with acute otitis media, and this is in a child, and you decide that you want to start treatment with antibiotics. What would be your first line agent? In children with acute otitis media, the first line antibiotic of choice is amoxicillin, and this is because it will cover your typical pathogens, which include your strep pneumo as well as your Marxella catarralis. With that being said, if there are risk factors for non-typable H influenza, then you need to consider Augmentin because only Augmentin is going to cover that pathogen. And this is because our beta-lactam antibiotics, which include our penicillins, have limited gram-negative coverage. It's only our extended spectrum penicillins like Augmentin and Unison that will have that gram-negative coverage. So what are the risk factors that we consider when we're considering non-typable H flu? This is if the patient has had a beta lactam antibiotic given in the last 30 days, has had treatment failure with amoxicillin and are still having symptoms consistent with acute otitis media, and also if they have findings of purulent conjunctivitis along with symptoms of acute otitis media, and this is because H. flu is more likely to cause this conjunctivitis compared to other pathogens. Let's now move on to otitis externa, which is an infection of the outer ear and not the middle ear as we saw with otitis media. With otitis externa, you might actually see signs of inflammation or an infection just from looking at the ear externally. You can see some edema and erythema of the ear canal, and this is also the same findings that you will see if you're using the otoscope. And now for treatment of otitis externa, we can prescribe topical eardrops in the form of topical fluoroquinolones or topical aminoglycosides, and we use these antibiotics in particular so that they can cover the most common pathogens, your Staph aureus, as well as Pseudomonas. All right, so let's now go over a practice question to solidify our understanding. We have a 23-year-old woman who is an active duty enlisted airman in the U.S. Air Force who comes to the base clinic because of a four-week history of an itchy sensation in her right ear. She has not had ringing in her ears or hearing loss. She works as a fuel specialist and at first attributed her symptom to the earplugs she uses when she is on the flight line. The symptom has not improved despite the patient's wearing headphones instead of the earplugs during the past two weeks. She has no history of a serious illness and takes no medications. Vital signs are normal. During examination, pulling of the right pinna inferiorly to examine the ear canal produces pain. The right ear canal appears erythematous and edematous. The tympanic membrane cannot be fully visualized because of the presence of cerumen. Examination of the left ear shows no abnormalities. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? So this is a really long test question that's filled with a lot of information, not all of which that you really need to get to the diagnosis. So let's look at some of the key phrases that we need to look out for here. So we know that the patient is coming in with a four-week history of an itchy sensation in her right ear. Pulling of the right pinna inferiorly to examine the ear canal produces pain as well. And this is actually a very classic finding that you'll find with otitis externa because movement of the canal can cause irritation and pain. And then looking at the right ear canal itself, it's noted that it appears erythematous as well as edematous. 
So in this history, we're really getting symptoms of irritation of the outer ear, as well as findings that show inflammation of the outer ear. So this is otitis externa. Serumin infection here is not correct because while the patient has earwax that's obstructing part of the view of the eardrum, it does not explain the symptoms that she's having, particularly the erythema and edema of the ear canal because earwax should not do that. Ear canal trauma here is also not likely because the patient uh, does not know any trauma that has occurred and she's also been wearing her headphones or her earplugs while she's on duty. Polychondritis here is actually a rare disease in which the cartilage of the ear becomes inflamed and red and so on exam it would be mentioned that her pinna or her outer ear appears erythematous and tender to touch. And seborrheic dermatitis here is not correct because while it can actually affect the ear canal, you'll often have other findings where it'll be in the postauricular area or the hairline behind the ear as well as the nasolabial fold. So the lack of skin findings here make this less likely compared to otitis externa. All right, everyone, we hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to like and subscribe. And as always, good luck studying, everyone.